Greetings, I'm Vincent, and welcome. In this episode, we're finally taking a step towards the stars and painting our first Battlefleet Gothic model here at Bunker 6. Today we will be working on an Emperor class battleship from the game Battlefleet Gothic. This is a model from 1999 and was still boxed prior to assembly and painting. Due to the fact these are cast white metal models, there will inevitably have to be some substantial amounts of cleanup if you want to have a good looking model at the end. Things that you will want to look out for are flash and little tiny pieces of metal that are created from the gate, vent and exhaust points on the initial mold itself. You can see that I'm using a gel type super glue. I prefer this to regular super glue because it's a little bit thicker. I'm sure many people would argue that using epoxy glue would be even better. And I do agree, I just didn't have any at the time of recording. Despite this being a boxed model, it didn't actually come with the little plastic guns, which was very disappointing. We're going to be using some resin reproduction parts instead. And when it comes to gluing heavy models like this, I highly recommend an alligator clip system like this. These models get heavy very quickly, so you're definitely going to want to have some type of clamping system so you're not getting your hand covered in super glue as you're waiting impatiently for these two heavy pieces of metal to bond together. Now I do recommend scoring the surfaces of both parts of metal that you're trying to bond together just to create an additional piece of surface area for the glue to sink into and bite onto. You won't need to do that for these plastic sections. They glue on basically immediately to the metal surface, which is very nice considering the rest of this model can be very tricky. Also be careful when you are putting the model down that you don't bend any of those small pieces at the base of it. Because this is going to be a dark colored model, priming with a black paint is completely fine. In this instance, we're going to be using Mission Models Black Primer with a touch of Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. The base coat of this model is going to be painted with Games Workshop's Caliban Green. This took about two or three coats, but I realized halfway through this particular process, I needed to attach the flying base stand. I've actually attached the stand permanently with epoxy putty, as you can see here. The flying base will not stabilize this model without being glued in place due to the weight of the model and the size of the initial hull. Now I should have probably masked these areas, but because these aren't models that I paint very often, I didn't have the foresight to do that. But we're going to remedy that by using a box cutter blade in order to create two clean metallic surfaces for the glue to bond to. Now we're just going to go around the model and clean up any chips or any pieces where the parts aren't aligning perfectly, where the metal is still exposed and covering them with a couple of base coats once again. Now, even though this is a how-to video, there are certain things in here that I would do differently in hindsight. And I recommend if you are following this video, do not do what I'm about to do here, which is paint the hole white with a paintbrush, but instead use an airbrush and fix any of the overspray with green paint afterwards. I used Scale 75's white paint, and you can use whatever white paint you prefer. And because it's white paint going on a dark color, this took about five coats. Now onto the easiest part of the entire process, just adding a wash or a shade. And I'm using here, of course, the classic Nuln Oil. I managed to not spill the pot in this entire process, which is a miracle. I recommend just using the cheapest brush you can find, but make sure that you don't let too much of the paint pull in the crevices because you want to keep as much of the detail as possible to just keep the Nuln Oil moving around for as long as possible until you have it in the exact places that you need to have it. Now this model looks very dark, but once the Nuln Oil has actually dried, things do lighten up a little bit, but we're going to be remedying the darkness even further by adding some lighter green dry brushes. So we're going to be starting off with Games Workshop's Warpstone Glow, as you can see here. Now, I'm all about saving money in the hobby, but I do recommend using a brush that is specifically designed for dry brushing, so you don't have to fix mistakes. Using a brush that's very flat like this allows the paint to be scraped across the surface of the highest points on the model, rather than having any paint going where you don't want it. Our second and final highlight for the green is a Games Workshop Moot Green. Now, depending on how much pressure you are using in the first highlight, I would halve the amount of pressure that you do for this final highlight. And that's because this really just needs to be a subtle layer. Now we're moving on to the silver metallics, and we're going to be using 
a color by Vallejo in the model color range, which is gunmetal gray, but normally I would have used Games Workshop's Lead Belcher. Now, although I don't actually like the texture of this paint compared to Lead Belcher, which comes out a little bit more smooth, I do prefer the lightness of this paint because it's a nice midpoint between the Lead Belcher and Iron Breaker of the Games Workshop range. I like this because when it comes to putting the Nuln Oil shade stage on to this metallic color, it doesn't make things too dark on an already very dark metallic finish. So we've got a better mid-tone to start with. Now normally I recommend not using a nice brush to do metallics because the metal flakes actually do damage the brush over time, but it really did require using a fine brush for these sections at the front of the ship. Now we're moving on to the gold base coat metallic section. And for this we will be using Games Workshop's Gehenna's Gold, which is a lovely color, but be patient with it because you will not get the finish that you're looking for until about two or three coats in. Now, this is a more brassy finish than the actual box art, which is a much more yellowy gold, but we will be working our way to that yellowy gold when we get to the highlight stage. Now, this is the first big mistake I made, was thinking that oil painting and doing panel lining with oils would be the quick way forward. I used a black oil paint that I'd never used before. I'm not going to bother mentioning the product because you're not going to want to be doing what I'm doing here. Sadly, the paint bled everywhere when I actually added it over the top of this gloss layer, and there was little I could do to fix it apart from wait for it to dry and then go back over it with some matte varnish and actually do everything by hand with acrylics, including fixing all of the oil that had spread all over the surface of the white paint, which was an absolute nightmare. Enjoy the process though. As you can see, I'm starting and it looks fine to start with, but then slowly that oil paint starts bleeding and stretching across the entire surface and everything turns into a horrible mess very quickly. Now, some might say, why don't you just use some thinners to wipe away the excess? True, but I only had Q-tips and Q-tips were too large. And as you can see from this white area, the Q-tips could barely even touch the surface of those white areas that needed repair. Now, if this ship was a Rolls Royce, then this would be its spirit of ecstasy. In order to get this gold finish, I will once again be using Gehenna's gold as a base coat. And I recommend two or three coats before you get a really solid finish. We will now be adding a shade to the recesses and we will be using Army Painter's Strong Tone in order to do that. It's a warm brown. It's not a dark, muddy brown like Agrax Earthshade, which I think does a nice job of complementing the gold base coat. And my apologies, but I forgot to somehow record the highlighting of this gold statue. I used the Elven Gold Color by Scale Color from the Metal and Alchemy range. Now, it's just by chance that I actually checked the box art and saw that this section underneath was green and not gold as well. So there we are. And as with anything when it comes to metal, you want to make sure that you are gluing metal to metal rather than a paint layer to a paint layer, because that is not going to hold. So we're just using a little file here and doing a little bit of cleanup to all the areas that are about to be glued together. Now let's move on to the engine exhausts. This is a pretty simple section. It's going to be a lot of black paint on the exterior of the exhaust. Then we're going to be hitting it with a metallic highlight, as you can see here. We're just dry brushing ever so slightly. The paint that we used in this instance is by Vallejo, and it's from the Game Color range, and it's just silver. It is quite a flaky silver, which I quite liked for this particular purpose. Now you can paint the interior of the exhausts any color you want or no color at all, because if the engines are off, you're probably not going to see any glowing back there anyway. I decided to do a blue glow, but you can do a green or an orange or anything else that you can think of. So we started with Vallejo's model color, Andrea Blue for our mid-tone. Then to shade the exhaust section, we used Games Workshop's Drakenhof Nightshade. The first blue highlight that we will use is Deep Sky Blue by Vallejo's model color range. Then the second highlight will be Sky Blue, also by the Vallejo model color range. And for basic highlighting like this, for best results, a rule of thumb to follow is the brighter the section gets, the narrower the surface area is that you should be painting. Now I'm just adding a little bit more metallic paint to the side exhausts here using the silver by Vallejo game color range.
Now we're going back to the Warpstone Glow highlight, and we'll be following it up with the Mood Green highlight on the stabilizers above the exhaust pipes. And finally we're going to hit the middle of this exhaust section with a 50-50 mix of white paint and a sky blue by Vallejo Game Color to really accentuate the searing heat that would be potentially coming off of this exhaust pipe. Once again, when it comes to gluing, make sure you've scraped away the paint so the glue is not gluing to the paint, but rather the metal surface instead. And now we're just going to be adding the exhaust pipes to the rest of the ship. The combination of cocktail sticks or toothpicks with this particular gel-like superglue make this job very easy. And that's because you can get into much more tight spaces than you can with just using a regular nozzle of the superglue bottle itself. Now we're going to paint the wings that come off the side of the ship and we're just using scale 75 white here. A couple of coats should do the job just fine. We're going to follow up with Gehenna's gold for the metallic sections here. And although it wasn't on film, I ended up just doing the green sections with Caliban green as you can see in this shot here. Then we followed up with some gloss varnish as we were going to be adding some Temia panel line paint. Now, I would not do any of these steps if I were you, as it went horribly wrong for me. I'm assuming when they said panel line, it means an actual deep recess of an actual panel line, rather than what I'm doing here, which is just adding it to corners. So as you can see, the actual enamel started to spread all over the surface of the white paint and was an absolute nightmare, and I basically had to start again. And what you're looking at in this shot is basically me starting from scratch, which is everything done with acrylics, including the black lines. I didn't use any null oil or anything, it is just black paint on a brush, done neatly. I added some army paint to soft tone where I felt it was necessary on the gold, and then I highlighted with scale color elven gold. Now it's just a matter of attaching these finished wings to the side of the spaceship. In this shot you'll actually see at the front of the hull there's still all that damaged white paint, but we will be fixing that shortly. You can see that the oil paint is completely spread and is not doing the job that I thought it was going to do. Now we're just going to keep the base very stock and very simple by adding a few coats of flat black paint and then covering it with matte varnish. The thing that I thought was really enjoyable, but at the time stressful, was the fact that I managed to make two very big mistakes with two different products, but trying to get to the same result, which was easier panel lining, and actually, neither of the products that I used worked in this instance. As you can see, you got all that staining that came from the oil paints, and then actually had the Tamiya panel line paints doing the same thing on the wings at the rear. So we just had to do it the old-fashioned way with acrylics, and now you're looking at the results. And just as previously mentioned with the other gold sections, we're going to be doing the highlights with the elven gold and then finishing off with soft tone by Army Painter. And as most rudimental shading goes, of course, I'm pulling the shade into the recesses as you would expect. Now, when the warp gives you lemons, make some imperial lemonade. And although the oil wash for the hull was a complete failure for the panel lines, it was very useful as a wash for the metallics. So sadly, I forgot to record me doing the wash on the metallics, but as you can see, that has already been done. And now we're just highlighting the silver. We are using Iron Breaker by Games Workshop, a nice, super bright silver. And as you can see, I think the contrast is working quite well on the metallics. You just make sure that you're focusing your attention on areas that would most likely catch the light even though you're in space. And also just focusing on all those tiny little dots throughout the spaceship. And if you're a little bit confused on what should be painted, you can always check the box art in case you're getting a little bit lost. And once I thought I had reached the point where the model was completed, I just covered the whole model with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, which is a great product. And here is the final result.
there we have it, another tutorial under our belt. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, maybe consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you're new here and appreciate Specialist Games content such as Epic 40k, Aeronautica Imperialis, or even Battlefleet Gothic, please consider subscribing. I've got lots more in the pipeline. But as always, I've been Vincent, and until next time, I'm signing off from here at Bunker 6. Thank <laughs> you.